Hi there! See this Dawn dish soap bottle? We'll turn it into this beautiful doll using cold porcelain clay. I hope you like today's project. Let's get started! Now to begin, we're going to have to remove all the stickers from the bottle. So I'm just doing this quickly. You don't need to remove the one from the back. But the since it's more paper-like, but the one on the front is shinier, I could say. I'm not sure what the material is. But it makes it harder for the clay to stick to it. And now I'm just lightly sanding the bottle to make it easier for the clay to stick to it. And once I'm done, it's going to look like this. I'm just going to lightly clean any dust off of it. Just like that. I'm just cleaning my area as usual. And now we're going to measure 10 tablespoons of cold porcelain clay in natural color. We're going to stretch it out and then wrap it around the bottle. Remember, you can find my cold porcelain clay recipe here on the channel. And I'm adding the links on the top right corner and on the description box below. Now just making sure we stretch it enough to fit around the bottle to be able to wrap around the entire bottle and I'm just slightly adding some glue and it wouldn't come out first so I had to force it a little bit more and I'm just adding it lightly to the back here. When attaching clay to clay you usually won't need glue but if you're attaching clay to any other surface, you will need some glue just to help you out. Okay, now that we have glue all around it, I was going to say all over it, but yeah, all over it, all around it. I'm just wrapping it very lightly. And then adding some pressure and pulling the clay away just to make sure it's nice and smooth. And remember, we always try to keep it to bring it together at the seams to create a nice, smooth union. Just like that. I have a little bump there, so you can see. So you just have to stretch it out and slightly mo model it very lightly, very softly. Now in that area right there where I have that small gap, we're going to have to add a small piece afterwards. But overall, we have pretty good coverage. If you want to redo this and stretch it again, you can definitely do that. i just rather not do right now since the clay could dry out and then it's going to be harder to work with it. So I'm just cutting together those unions very carefully. We're going to add more details in this area here, so this will not be a problem for this particular project. If you need a smoother finish, you might definitely need to do some steps differently. Now I'm getting some of that excess just to cover that little gap I mentioned earlier. And that works well. You can definitely blend it out in a bit. And at the top here, I'm just going to cut it and remove the cap. And I'm going to cut all around where the neck of our bottle begins. Just like that. And I'm also going to cut around the bottom, all of the excess there. Now once we've done that, it's going to look like this and I have a like roughly less than a centimeter outside of the bottle here, a little bit of excess and I'm just going to wrap it to the bottom of the bottle. Remember that clay, cold porcelain clay shrinks a little bit when it dries since it air dries. So I'm trying to keep it as secure as possible to make sure it won't shrink and end up showing the bottom of the bottle. So just doing that very carefully and pressing the bottle against our mat just to add that extra pressure and make sure it sticks together. Now for the blends here, I'm getting the spray bottle just filled with water and then just slightly spraying water over the seam. And then using my fingers, just 
going over all that space until it's nice and smooth and we can't see the seam at all. And also doing that at the top of the bottle to make sure we don't have any gaps at all. And once we have this nice and smooth, we're just going to let it dry. Once it's dry, it's going to look like this. It's not fully dry, but I let it dry enough just to let it to make it easier to work with. And now I'm measuring two tablespoons of cold porcelain clay and we're going to stretch them out until we can fit the base of the bottle over it. Once it fits, we're going to glue it together just using regular glue. Again, this is the regular glue I use for the clay recipe. Make sure you add enough glue so everything sticks together nicely. And I'm just placing it over that clay I stretched out to make sure it's sticking together. And now we're going to cut off the excess. But I'm going to leave a small excess here all around. So it's not, I'm not cutting it right against the bottle, I'm leaving a small gap. And doing the same thing all around. And once that's done, it's going to look like this. And we can just lightly tap it to make sure it's nice and secure. I'm also using the bottle itself to add that pressure. Now I'm just adding some cornstarch on the bottom of the bottle just to make sure it won't stick to my mat. If you have more time, you can definitely let this dry first before you continue working on it. Now I'm measuring one tablespoon of cold porcelain clay in this pink color and we're going to stretch it out into this long cylinder as long as we can and then we're going to flatten this and turn it into those little ruffles. As a reference this one is 55 centimeters long. I'll try to add the conversions in the description box below if you don't want to run those two inches. And I'm just using this roller to make it flat all around. Making sure we keep the same width all around. This is roughly two centimeters wide. And just doing that all through this long ribbon string we made. Once we have that, it's going to look like this. And now I'm just cutting off the ends so they're square. And then we start just twisting it and turning it to make these little ruffles. So it's just like curves, curving it up, curving it down, up and down, up and down, all the way around. And we're just going to be cautious to measure it against the base of the bottle to make sure we can wrap it all the way around. And once we've done that all through this ribbon, it's going to look like this. And I'm just wrapping it around just to make sure it does fit. And that one's perfect for mine. Now using my ruler, I'm trying to line this as straight as possible. And using the ruler, I'm just going to add some pressure and make a line. I'm, I keep aligning them because they look a little off on the camera. And since I have this one this way, I'm going to turn it around just to make it to keep it in place. Now I can see it better. It's not as noticeable on the camera, but I can definitely see it better from my angle. And now I'm just making that line there. And getting that little gap at the end there. Just like that. And now we have that extra little detail. And it looks like this, like it has a seam all through the ribbon. Now I'm going to add a little bit of glue starting at the back as usual so we can make that seamless union and I am adding that glue all around between the bottle itself, the wrapped bottle and the base. 
So again, just starting from the back. And what I made, th that line I made to sort of separate it is going to be roughly aligned to that seam between both pieces. So the ruffles are at the bottom and also on the bottle itself. And now we're going to paint some roses all around. For that, we're using this pink acrylic paint. And I'm making sort of circles. They don't need to be perfectly round circles, just round enough. They can be little blobs. And I'm just adding them randomly all around. And I'm just going to paint five at a time because I don't want them to dry out. And then using white acrylic paint, I'm just making a spiral to sort of make the rose detailing. And they don't need to be com completely connected spirals. You'll start to see that I make some lines separately, adding some lines to the sides just to make the petals. And again, just doing this before the paint dries out so the white lines won't look too harsh on top of the pink. We want it to blend out a little bit or blend in. <laughs> and we're just going to do this all around the dress, both on the front and the back. So once we're all done, it's going to look like this. And now we're going to paint the leaves. So I'm just getting some dark green and so, sort of this light olive green color, sage green, I would say. And I just used that same dark color and added a little bit of white instead of yellow to make it this shade instead of lime green. If you were if we had added yellow, it would have been more lime green. And with white, it looks more like sage green. And I'm just adding leaves in between the roses here, where it's very close to the other flowers. I'm just adding two small leaves, and where we have enough space, I'm adding three, and just doing that all around. And once that's done, I'm getting the darker shade of green and adding sort of like the the branches or the stalks for the roses coming from the center of the leaf closer to the rose itself just like that and very 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 fine very fine lines and again doing this all around the dress once we're done it's going to look like this it's very floral already and I'm just getting my pink paint again just to add some small groups of pink dots just making three dots and those small gaps we have here just to finish filling up the dress and making it look nice and full these are completely optional again remember this is completely up to you that is the beauty of creating things from scratch and the beauty of clay you can do whatever you want. I'm also just going to add some dots on their own, so just one single dot in between the spaces, just whatever you think is appropriate. And now on the little ruffles on the background, right where we have that line we made using the ruler, I'm going in with my eyeshadows just to add a little bit of shading and make it look darker where we added that line. And now we're going to glue roses on the dress itself. I already have these already. And these are just like the ones we made for our little gnome couple figurines. So you can definitely follow that tutorial if you want to see how to make these. And if you would like a separate video on them, let me know in the comments and I'll make sure to get that uploaded ASAP. And again, just adding these roses on the bottom of her dress here. The layout is completely up to you. So I'm just offering some very basic guidance here. 
I'm adding five roses here at the front. And I'm only adding them there and adding enough pressure to make sure they stay in place. Now to continue we're going to make her neck and shoulders and for that I'm getting one tablespoon of cold porcelain clay, kneading that thoroughly, shaping it into a ball. And we're applying enough pressure while we need it to make sure it's very nice and smooth. And then I'm making it into sort of this drop shape like we've done before. And I'm getting this little skewer here. And I'm going to insert it into my bottle just to see what the height is. Making sure we get all the way to the bottom of the bottle. And this stop area here, the part that is outside of the bottle, I'm going to leave seven centimeters from the bottle itself to the top of the skewer. <laughs> Sorry about that. So in total this little wooden stick should be 27 centimeters and I'm going to measure one fourth of a teaspoon of clay and then knead that thoroughly and shape it into a bowl to attach it to my skewer and then secure that to the in to the bottom of the inside of the bottle. And that will make sure it stays in place while our doll dries and while we work on it. And again just adding enough glue and securing it to the bottom of the inside of our bottle. And that's going to help it stay in place and give our neck and shoulders more stability. So now I'm going back to this drop shape I have here using my tools to make a hole at the bottom. This is a star tool and I'm just making that hole to go all the way through to the top. And now I can place this on my little wooden stick or skewer. And now I can apply the pressure well enough pressure to start shaping those neck and shoulders. Getting this lower here and using Vaseline as you need to. Just to make sure everything stays smooth and our clay doesn't dry out. And this is where I start shaping the shoulders. So right now I was just stretching the neck to leave enough space at the top and now we actually start working on the shoulders themselves. Just like that, making them there. We don't need to cut off any excess because we have it right there. And now in this space here at the top I'm going to mark around her neck, so sort of like the clavicle sort of area. Just making those little necklines. And now I'm just going to close off her dress. If we want to, we can definitely add more volume or definition to her chest. In my case I'm getting one fourth of a teaspoon for each breast and I'm just kneading that thoroughly, shaping it into a ball and then we're just going to glue it here at the front. At the front of the bottle connected to her chest. And same thing for the other piece. And now, back to the dress, I'm getting one tablespoon of this light pink color, kneading that thoroughly, making it into a cylinder, 
And I'm using my roller just to help me make this flat and stretch it out a little bit more. Making sure we can wrap it all around the top of our doll. And making sure it can cover that chest and shoulders area. Now I'm removing a top here well, a little piece here at the top using a spoon, a measuring spoon, since that's going to act sort of like the neckline. And now we can do this here, making sure we're covering all around, just like this. Going all the way around and trying to connect the seams at the back as always just making sure we join them nicely at the back so when we make this cut it's going to be a seamless union just like that and I'm just smoothing that out and now here at the top I'm also joining those pieces in and I'm going to make another cut just the same way as we did the one on the back making sure the seams are nice and almost invisible and same thing for the other side and just blending them together just like that adding some pressure to secure everything into place and now we have the base here all set and ready to continue. Now we're going to make the, well, create the little fabric area that's going to go around her neck. So for that, I'm measuring one fourth of a teaspoon of clay and since I'm going to have to cut this in half I switched it out so just measuring it out in one eighth of a teaspoon and I'm just stretching it out with two separate ends to make it sort of like a half moon just like that and I'm measuring them to make sure they're roughly the same size since again this is going to be the color so going around her neck and I'm just adding a little bit of glue there connecting it from the center to the back or from the center of the front area all the way to the back and I'm a little off camera again here sorry about that but I hope you can see it in those little glimpses there it's just going from the center of the front or the middle of the front to the middle of the back and same thing for the left side. Now I'm measuring one eighth of a teaspoon for each hand and as always just shaping that into a ball then stretching it out into this sort of cone shape or drop shape making it flat on the wider end to start making the palm of the hand and I'm trying to, I always try to make both of them at the same time, so the same steps at the same time, so they're roughly the same size. This is just a general good idea that works all the time. And I start adding the different directions to define which is going to be the left hand and which is going to be the right hand. And once we have that all set, I can cut out the thumb just by making a triangle, as you can see it right here. And now we're going to cut out the space for the other four fingers. And I'm just cleaning my scissors here, but I'm literally just going to make three more cuts in this wider area. One, two, three, and now we have our little four fingers. But I'm going to keep them together. I just like to still cut them separately to get more detail. And I'm just bending her fingers here and then adding more detail to the palm of her hand and going into 
the spaces between the fingers again. Trying to keep that separation very visible, very noticeable. Just like that. And we're going to do the same thing for the other hand. Now we have both hands ready. I'm just going to add some shading just to make the little details stand out. Just like this. And now I'm going to go ahead and make the sleeves. Now for the sleeves we're going to measure one tablespoon of that same light pink colored clay for each. And I'm kneading that thoroughly, shaping it into a ball. And I'm just stretching that out until it looks like a drop, trying to make it not too thin at the top. So it's more like a cylinder. And now at the center of the widest part here, I'm just going to use my star tool to stretch it out and get those long flowy sleeves here. And we use our fingers just to finish stretching that out, making it wider to get that nice detail on the sleeve. And keeping one side slightly longer than the other one so when we have everything put together we're going to have that natural look sort of like gravity is affecting it. Now I'm adding some glue to one of the hands and placing it inside the sleeve. And now I'm adding some glue to the inside of the sleeve here and then attaching it to the torso. Just like that. Making sure it's well secured and moving the hands towards the front of her body. Now at the top of her sleeves here, I'm just adding some pleats, just like that. And now we have our sleeve all set here, and I'm going to do the same thing on the other sleeve and hand. Once we have both of them ready, it's going to look like this. And now I'm just going to keep stretching out the ends of those sleeves here. And now we're going to make a bow for the front part. For this I'm measuring one teaspoon of that of clay in that same light pink color. Stretching it out into this very long cylinder. And I'm just going to just stretch that enough to let me make the ribbon and her bow. Now this one is 18 centimeters long and I'm just making it flat. Sort of like a ribbon again. And I'm just going to cut this into two equal pieces. This is completely up to you. In my case I'm making these 7 centimeters long. And I'm just bringing both ends together here. And completely combining them together and then pulling that into this sort of pointy end. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other one. As you can see the clay actually got stuck so I'm going to have to make these again. But it's going to be the exact same procedure. Now that I have them all set, I'm going to go in and add some shading. And I'm using my eyeshadows for this. Adding them very lightly here to closer to that pointy end. And then with this little extra piece, I'm making some angle cuts 
at the end and combining everything together at the top and also going to add some shading here and we have to let this dry to then glue them together. Now I have these all nice and dry and now I can actually glue them onto my doll. So I'm just using a little bit of glue and attaching them right here in the space between her torso and the dress. Just like that. And to accentuate the middle of the ribbon here, I'm just going to use a small rose. Just like the ones we have at the bottom of her dress. And I'm keeping her hands together because I'm going to add a heart here. And now I'm just getting another one teaspoon of clay, also in this light pink color, stretching it out into this long cylinder until it's roughly 18 centimeters long. Now using my roller, I'm going to make it flat, just like this, trying to keep it as straight as possible. And naturally this is going to make it a little bit longer, so it's going to be longer than 18 centimeters in the end. And we made the one at the bottom two centimeters, so I'm making this one one centimeter long. And after stretching this, it's going to be a little bit longer. In my case, this one was 28 centimeters. So now I'm just cutting off the ends here to make it square instead of round. And doing the same thing we did at the bottom. Just trying to keep it a little bit shorter since it's narrower than the space we had at the base. So just like we did for the one at the base, I'm using my ruler here and making that line closer to one of the sides of our ruffles. And this one we're going to fit it all around the collar. So I'm just adding some glue here and always starting at the middle of the back and then connecting both pieces there to get a nice and sort of invisible seam. And I don't want to have any excess so I'm just curling everything there in place to make enough space for it and make sure I don't have any extra ruffles. And I'm out of camera right now again, sorry about that. Trying to find the best position for the camera to make sure you don't miss out any details. And, and now I'm just adding some shading the way we did at the bottom again. Just going over that line we made with the ruler to make that stand out. Now for the heart, I'm measuring half a teaspoon, half a tablespoon of clay in a little brighter red or darker pink. Sorry, I said red but it'll, a, a bit darker pink color. And I just shaped that into a ball, then sort of this, this like chunky triangle. And using this bone tool, I'm adding that line at the top. You can also use a skewer, a crochet needle with a little coffee straw works as well. Anything you have that's not going to make a strong dent or a sharp dent on the clay we can definitely use that. So preferably round. And now we have our little heart. You can just slowly model all around it to make sure you have it nice and smooth and you get the heart shape that you want. And now I'm going to make a hole starting at the bottom all the way to the top. This is similar to what we did for the the table garlands, the bead garlands. 
just like that and once we add the fabric through here we're going to go ahead and give it a little bit of shape again and I'm using this thread here and using my crochet needle I'm just going to run the string through the heart And I'm going to bring it back the same way I pulled it through. Because I just want this little loop here at the top. So this is what she's going to be holding. And I'm just pulling it here just to get the right length I'm looking for. Just like that. I'm just measuring here and testing. Just like that. And I just pulled it up a little bit more to make the knot. And then pulling it back, adding enough glue right underneath the knot to, to secure it into place and make sure it won't move from our little clay piece and now I'm going to cut off the excess here at the bottom and we have this sort of like like a tassel piece here hanging at the bottom and I'm just going to go back in and make that bottom of the heart pointy again and I'm going to make a knot here at the bottom too just to make sure it won't slide out of the string once we have it hanging from her hands just like that and once one more time just evening it out the ends and I'm adding a little bit of glue at the center here just to add a rose and now we have this little pendant all ready and set and now we're just going to glue it onto the hands I'm just adding a little bit of glue here directly on the hands and then attaching my little well this little heart here on her hands keep in mind we will have to sort of prop it up to make sure it won't fall or damage the hands while everything dries so at the bottom here I'm going to use you can use either a like a paint container or a, a just the paint lid or any other container that can sort of have the exact height to keep it up and keep the pendant from pulling on the hands and once we're done and everything's dry we can just remove it and it will work perfectly now before we move on to the hand I'm just going to add some eyeshadow here on the edges of the sleeves again just adding that shading now for the hands we're going to need one and a half tablespoons of cold porcelain clay and half of a styrofoam sphere that's at least 4.5 centimeters wide. Now we're going to need to well to knead our clay so it's nice and smooth and remember just to add enough pressure you can use your hand against the mat just to make sure it's very nice and smooth has no air bubbles or anything and it's going to be perfect for the face and we just need it to be wide enough to fit on the styrofoam sphere and I'm just using some Vaseline to help me make that even smoother and keep it from drying out and now I'm just using my thumb to add that separation line to sort of start adding the features on her face. So the cheeks, the cheekbones, the chin, the jaw, and everything else. And using this silicone tip rubber brush, I am just adding the shapes for the nose. And using my fingers, I go in and make the indents for like the eye cavities here and that will also help me pull out the volume of the nose give it that 3D effect pull it out from the rest of the face and using my rubber brush just to add some more detailing on the nose bridge adding the nostrils 
and just continue modeling all around switching be alternating between the rubber brush and my fingers now at the bottom here I'm making two small dots just to signal where I'm going to be making the mouth and once I have that there I'm using this plastic knife just to make the smile using a ball tool to make it to make those edges of her lips stand out even more you can use the same tool for all of this I'm just showing you how you can use your different tools if you have them and I'm just pulling out that bottom lip now and like I said before just shaping the chin and the cheeks I'm going to go over this as many times as I need to to get the exact face features I'm looking for so you will see this in real time just me going over and over the same spots adding more details if I want her mouth to look a specific way and I'll just leave you here watching that happen in real time Now I like the way it looks, we're all set and she, in my case I'm making her with her eyes closed so I'm just getting a small piece of clay, making two small balls here, keeping them roughly the same size, just like that. I'm kneading them thoroughly and making them flat, sort of like circles and again trying to keep them both the same size just like that and I'm going to cut a small piece from the bottom here so it's almost like a semicircle and adding it on one of the spots each so we can see the eyelids here like they're closed and again this part is going to be completely up to you but I'm just getting my eyeshadows ready to add some shading and then adding that on the bottom of her eyelids same thing around her mouth and her nose 
And on the top of the eyelid, I'm adding a very light pink color. And just blending that out. And I'm also adding it to that brow area. I'm just adding a little bit to her forehead as well, just trying to give it some depth. And I'm getting some pink just to add it around her cheeks, her cheekbones, sort of like blush. Just like that. Now we're going to paint the eyelashes and the eyebrows. For the eyelashes, um, sorry, for the eyebrows, I'm going to start by using some eyeshadow just to create a general guideline of where they're going to go. Since this gives me an idea of where they're going to go, it's going to make it much easier to paint them in. And for that, I'm going to be using acrylic paint, brown acrylic paint. And we're just going to follow that same line as a guideline, just using our paint. Just like that. And uh, very lightly just adding sort of like the little hairs, little eyebrow hairs. And now we're going to add the eyelashes. And I felt like the eyebrows were a little too strong. So I erase them and I'm adding them again, making them a little bit shorter. Remember this is completely up to your own taste, the expression, the thickness of her eyebrows, how long they are, etc. And now I do like how they look for my particular style here. And for the eyelashes, I'm going to use very thin or watered down black acrylic paint. And I'm going to make a single line at the bottom here, the bottom of her eyelid. And getting that last eyelash towards the end. Sort of mimicking eyeliner at first and then just adding the lashes in. And doing the same thing for the other eye. Getting that last eyelash and then just adding the, the rest in between. And I'm trying to highlight these ones a little bit more. So it looks a little bit fuller and they both look even. Now with the brown paint. I'm going to add a little bit of that brown acrylic paint at the top of her eyelid. Just adding those creases in there. Making sure our brush isn't too loaded. As you can notice, it's just on the outer corner here. Very lightly. Just like that. And I'm just going to 
add some lipstick on her lips, I would say. So that's just pink acrylic paint, also watered down, and then just adding it very lightly on her lips. Making sure we apply it all around, highlighting the top lip as well as the bottom lip. Just like that. And now I'm going to go in and add some freckles. For that, we just need a little bit of brown paint, watered down very, very lightly. Just like that. And I'm going to use a liner brush. You can also use a toothpick for this. We don't want them to be too dark or too perfectly round, just like small irregular shapes. And I'm adding them all around her cheeks. Making them very light and subtle. Also adding them around her nose. and the spaces between. And once we like how it looks, we're just going to let it dry. Once it's dry, we can start working on the hair. And for that, I'm measuring one tablespoon of this very light brown color, kneading that thoroughly, shaping it into a ball. As always, making it as smooth as possible and I'm using the back of the spoon to make it a little bit hollow and to help me stretch it out a little bit more just so I can fit the half of the styrofoam ball in it. So in order to do that I'm just going to glue the face on the styrofoam here just adding plenty of white glue attaching the face Now I finish shaping it up here as I bring both pieces together, highlighting her cheeks and everything. And now I can add plenty of glue again to this piece here. But in my case, I'm going to make this. I'm going to make this piece a little bit bigger, so I can also wrap it around the sides of her face. You'll see it here, and I'm just wrapping it all around, making sure I'm covering the entire styrofoam ball and part of her face. I'm going to use this tool for now just to help me support her face so I don't add too much pressure and just to make it easier for me to handle this while I work on adding the rest of the details. So just securing the hair. Just like that. And now I'm going to start brushing her hair. So just adding the details. And I am smoothing it down towards the face, just like that. And I'm adding the hair detailing, so just the hair strands there. 
I'm using this tool just to make sure the middle part isn't too noticeable, like it's not too sharp. I want to make everything look smooth and as natural as I can. Just like this. And doing this all around. Also doing that for the back. Always remember that there's a limit to how far back we can go with the hair strands to the sides and at some point we start going with the hair strands to the back and now I'm going to make the ears for that just using two small pieces of clay and just to get a general idea if you want measurements we're going to measure one eighth of a teaspoon of clay and then just keep cutting that in half until you get a general size that matches the size of her head so now I have this all set, I'm adding some glue and attaching them into place and then making them a little bit more flat or a little bit flatter. And using my ball tool I'm just adding a small hole in the middle, a small indent to give them that ear shape. just like that and now we're going to shape them as well just to make sure they match the rest of the face just like that and now we have everything matching nicely together so I'm, I'm adding a little bit more shading to her forehead and nose and now we can go in and add the rest of her hair I'm always going to keep that piece there just to make sure it's easier to handle the head and to finish styling her hair, I'm going to place the head on the body, which is why I removed it from the piece actually, because now I can actually put it where it belongs. And I'm just sliding it there, and I'm placing it slightly at an angle. And again, the neck is up to you how long you want to keep it. I'm just adjusting as I go here. Now very carefully we're going to work on adding the hair. First I'm going to place the hair that goes at the front. So I'm just adding a little bit of glue at the front of her face here. And I'm going to use that same color clay to make some curls. And for the curls, you just wrap these strings of clay around some skewers or wooden sticks or even toothpicks here like these ones. And now we're going to end up with these little nice curls. For these small ones, it's half of one eighth of a teaspoon, so one sixteenth. And for the bigger ones, it's one fourth of a teaspoon. I'm just gonna show you how you make how I make these, and you can see them here. I'm just measuring that out, just like that. Now I'm stretching out the clay. as much as I can as thin as I can since these are going on the front of her face I want them to be a, as smooth as possible as thin as possible sorry and to add the sort of like the hair texture I like to use these screws like the one you're seeing here And I'm doing this on both sides so when we get that curl shape you can see the texture on any side. And now I secure that to the top of the toothpick and slowly start wrapping it around the toothpick. Now this toothpick needs to be covered in Vaseline before as well just to keep the clay from sticking to it. And for the pieces of the front I'm going to wrap two separate toothpicks and I'm going to wrap them in opposite directions to get sort of like 
the front, the left and the right curls. Just like that. Now these aren't fully dry, it's only been a couple of minutes. And it's still kind of flexible and you'll see in the end that when it's fully dry they're, they're still kind of flexible. And for the bigger ones, the bigger curls, we're going to do the exact same thing. So just stretching that out, adding some hair texture on both sides. And this is just like when you use a roller, it's going to stretch the clay a little bit more. And then we have our little skewers or wooden sticks. You just add some Vaseline on it and then do the same thing. Start wrapping it from the top. I always try to align it with the thinnest part of the hair at the top there so it looks more natural. And we're letting this dry. And how long you wait for that to dry is completely up to you. I like to wait just till they're, they're a little bit dry, it's just a couple of minutes. And I let them dry vertically so they don't stick to anything else and they dry in this nice position. And once you slide them off, they come off really nicely with, they don't stick to anything and it's nice and easy. And like I said, these are still kind of fresh. They're not fully dry. But I don't want these to be fully curled. I want them to be more like waves, which is why I'm taking them out early. And once we have all of them out, they're going to look like this. I made 20 big curls and 5 small curls. And now I'm going to start slowly adding them here. Again, the small ones are for the front of her face. I'm just being careful with the direction they're following to make sure they look like left and right curls. Now I'm adding more glue and securing the curl here at the top, making it a little bit shorter so it doesn't cover her entire face. I'm getting another one here, just rolling it up a little bit more before I cut it and then just placing it here. So it looks nice at the front here. And now we're going to place one more on top of these two here, going towards the back. Always trying to keep those ears visible. But again, that's completely up to you. And I'm just adding a little bit of glue to make sure I can keep that curl in place and it won't end up covering her face. I'm adding another one on the other side here and I'm just going to keep adding curls all around her head and the placing um looking to get in the end. Now I'm not adding glue to the ends of these curls because I don't want them to stick to her face. I want them to keep some sort of movement. I want them to be able to move just a little bit in the end. And now, before I add the rest of the curls, I'm going to add some earrings. So I just made two small um, pink clay balls. You can also use small pearls like the ones I just showed on the screen. It's just whichever you decide. And But the clay would look really nice as well as you can see it here. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading to make them stand out a little bit more. Just like that. And now I'm going to move my camera up a little bit more because I'm going to add the hair and I want it to be able to, I want it to be a little bit more noticeable. Now here, following the direction that we added the hair strands in, I'm going to add some glue to the back of her hair, all the way to the back. 
and I'm going to use a brush just to spread that out evenly just to make sure the curls stick nicely in place and have a good glue base to stick on. Just like that. And if you set like the ends of the hair the way I did, just making sure we leave those ends as ends of the hair. So we would use the other ends to start attaching it from her head. You would have sort of like roots and ends of the hair. And I'm just gluing them starting from the center towards the outside to follow that natural hairline and we're going to place all of them in the same way and once we've added all the ones here on the lowest line or the bottom layer we're going to add glue again to start adding the ones at the top that's going to make sure these ones are nice and secure on top of the other curls and I'm going to do that all around once we're all set, it's going to look like this. On the front here, it's going to look like this. And it's up to you again how many curls you want to show on the front of her dress. And up to a certain point, you're going to be able to move it. You can also just like give her a side ponytail, a half updo, and just multiple hairstyles. You can also add a flower crown at the top here and it's going to look nice as well. In my case, I'm giving her a little hat and you'll see it in a bit too. We're making it in this video. Now I'm going to make the hat. Now for the hat I'm measuring one tablespoon of clay in that same light pink color. I'm just kneading that thoroughly and stretching it out. You can use any circle as a reference since we're going to be making sort of like a half moon. The reference in my case is that the circle's diameter is the same as the sphere's width. The sphere's diameter. Well, the same or wider. Now I'm going to cut a circle here at the top. That's sort of that width, just like this. I'm just thinning that down on the edges and stretching it a little bit more. And then the bottom here, we're not going to need it too much since, again, this is a half moon. Now I'm going to cut here. And now we have that half moon here that I talked about. Now we have our little doll here and I'm going to try placing this at the top and making sure it can go from ear to ear. If it fits in that area then we have the perfect length or width. And now I just take I just took it off her head again just to add some detailing so adding one line closer to the top edge and then adding these little lines for texture and that top edge we just made and then some more lines on the bottom edge here just to make sort of like a crisscross pattern just like that and we're going to let this dry. And we have to let it dry on the back of a measuring spoon 
or a styrofoam sphere or just anything round to make sure you can keep that round shape once it's dry. Now I do have one already dry here and I'm going to add some shading. Again, using my eyeshadows, you can use powder toners for this or even um, grinded chalk pastels. And I'm just adding that color all around the edges here and also highlight the pattern a little bit. Just like that. And once it's dried up a little bit, it's easier to place it on top of her head without damaging the shape. And I'm going to put it back on that spoon just to let it finish drying out. And I'm going to measure another tablespoon of clay. So I had to move that around since that was on the back of my measuring spoon. And this is going to be the base of the hat. So I just measure that. I'm going to knead it thoroughly, stretch it out, and again we're going to make sort of like a half moon. So just stretching it out, trying to keep both sides into, trying to turn both sides into pointy ends. And this also needs to go from ear to ear. And now we have this shape right here and I'm just going to add some lines using the ruler across this shape to make it look sort of like it's, it has some pleats. It's pleated. And I'm just, I'm just lifting it a bit and giving it that round shape. I'm also going to add some toner at once since I know this shape is the length is roughly what I need for it to fit around the head of her doll. If you're not sure you can do this afterwards until you attach it to her head. And just making sure I add that shading all throughout the piece. And I'm going to measure it on top of her head. Again, slightly off camera here, but it is the same concept we did before for that top part. And if we don't want to attach the hat to her face, or sorry, to her head, then you can do that separately and let it fully dry separately and make it sort of like a bandana and that you can put on and take off as needed. If you want to attach it to her head then you can just go ahead and do that right now with a little bit of glue. And I'm just going to glue this into a single piece adding some glue to the base of the piece we made before and attaching this one to the main piece we just added. Just like that. Now we're also going to add some toner on the back of her hat. And like I said before, I'm sorry for being off screen. I will look into rearranging the camera setup to make sure everything is always on screen. But you can get a better look here right now that I added some of that shading to the back of the hat. And I'm also going to add some flowers here. So I'm going to make a ribbon for where this hat is attached with. And I'm just measuring one teaspoon of clay in that same light pink color. I'm going to knead that thoroughly, stretch it out. Until we make a very long cylinder. That is as even as possible all throughout. And then I'm going to make it flat. 
keeping it a little bit thick in this case. And we're going to do the same thing for what we did on the ribbon on the front of her dress. So I already have some dry pieces here. And the rest of the flowers here as well. Now to place these strings here, we're going to cut off the ends here, again at an angle, so we have an inverted triangle in there. Just like that. And then we're going to cut this in half. I'm stretching them a little bit more. And now we're going to glue everything in place. So I'm going to add one of these strings to one side of her hat and the other one of the other side on the other side. And I'm trying to move them to be on in front of her dress. Just like that. We can let it loose or we can also add a little bit of glue to help attach it in place. And we can set it however we prefer for it to dry. Now I'm going to keep moving her to make sure nothing sticks into a single place. And I'm going to add some glue here at the top and then add these two pieces for the, the bow. Just adding some bows to her head. And in the center here I'm going to add a rose. Um, just trying to check out my roses to make sure they're both roughly the same size since they're going to be added to the same location. The ribbons on her hair. I do have some smaller ones, so I'm just, again, looking into my rose collection here, trying to find the best ones for this particular spot. And I have the ones I want, and I'm just going to add that one there and do the same thing for the other side. And just to make it easier to see right now and just to work on it if you're you're working on the doll while it's still not fully dry. I'm working on this separately, just being very careful in how I add it. And that's it. Just the little bow pieces and the rose in the middle with her little strings on the sides, which is where we would close this hat. And if you want to glue it to her head, like I said before, you can definitely do that. Now I'm just going to add some decoration on the inside here. I'm going to add three flowers. Three of these roses we've been using throughout her dress. Just like that. I'm placing the two biggest ones on the bottom and the smallest one at the top. And there we go. Now we can place it on top of her head. And we can check if we like it as is or if we're going to make any other changes. I'm just adding one more rose here because I feel like that was empty space. And I'm just moving these strings to make sure they're in front of her dress. And I'm just placing the hair the way I want it to look. And like I said, this is completely up to your own taste, how you prefer to place her and style her. And this is a beautiful doll that you can use to decorate any space in your home as gifts, to place as centerpieces on a party or even on a cake and that's it for today's class so i hope you like this project very much thank you for your comments and your support my name is rosie rivera many blessings